This episode of Fragbox TV is brought to you by the world's most beautiful nano reef tanks. Start your reefing adventure at reefcasa.com. What is going on, my reefing fam? March here. This is Fragbox TV. It is Monday. Stores closed. Shipping's done. Camera is on. Hello. I need your help. I need you to comment below. I'm going to show you something, and I want your um, I want your opinion. So I don't always ask for your comments. You guys comment a lot. Thank you very much. But this time, I'm very much asking for you to comment. It's uh, it's a question I have about Acropora color. Um, it's going to be on this one right here, the Miyagi Miyagi Tort or Tortusa. We call it Tort for short. This is our Fragoon. Oh wait, hello, welcome. If you're new to the channel, what is this? This is like a vlog of our saltwater coral store here in Toronto. And uh, it just follows the never-ending changing shop and there's some travel and there's some inter entertainment and infotainment. Anyways, we have this very easy to keep, relatively easy if we're talking about <clears throat> hard coral, the Miyagi Tort. And he does pretty well in here. This is our Fragoon. What it, why is it a Fragoon? Because it's a uh, lagoon sort of display tank. But... We also frag and sell out of it. So instead of having like your traditional racks that you would see in a store, kind of like this, where all your corals are set up, we wanted to do something a little bit more natural. And one of our viewers out there picked the name, or we picked the name, he suggested Fragoon, and now it's called the Fragoon, and he won a $100 gift card. But, anyways, not to get sidetracked, this is the Miyagi Tort, and we have it under our Radeon G6 Blues. And this tank is connected, so you don't see under here. Well, actually, I can show you because the door is broken and it's open. So, hello. Um, it drains down to the basement into a large sump that is connected with these two tanks over here. It's part of a larger, like, 1,600 or 2,000 gallon system um, that runs down the center of the store. So, this is all the same water here. Now, I have the same Tortusa over here in what we call T3. It doesn't have a fancy name unless we should give it one where we keep a lot of our frags now check out the color on this same coral bam look at that maybe i should take one over there and put it side by side it's it's a lot that's exactly what i should do hmm. but when i pick it up hmm, it's going to stress it out a little bit okay anyways let's do it let's go take it over there and i'll show you side by side and i want to maybe you guys can help me understand the difference. I think this example was better. I brought the colony over here. So check out the colony. Check out the franks. Colony, not bad. It's a little dull. It grows really well. Growth is really, really good. Color lacking. Look at that. Look at that difference. What is different? Why am I experiencing such a difference in color? Now this is the weird thing. This is why I picked up the camera. Usually in my train of thought, I've been doing this for let's say 15 years. Acropora. Highlight high flow, that's how you're gonna get the best color. I come from the era of halide and um, power compacts and T5 high output and we you couldn't give them enough light. We have them under Radeon Gen 6 Pro and the PAR here is about 300. Over there, it's 100, 100, 300. Crazy flow. These things, my I got one, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven power heads. Four of them are the Neptune waves. The flow in here is intense. I have it off right now. Lots and lots of flow. Not so much flow. So this is why I'm a little bit confused on the coloration because it's doing the exact opposite of what I would expect. I would expect the pieces in here to be a little bit more dull and I wouldn't expect them to look so hot, so good. They're under much, much lower light. Why are they here? I just threw them over here and I kind of forgot about them. And then I realized, damn, they're looking really good. Maybe we should put more acro under these lights. And it's making me think maybe we give them a lot more light than they need. Maybe it's getting a suntan and it's building up that bacteria, that zoanthelae that it has a symbiotic relationship with and it's getting a little brownie, maybe. That's why I'm not 100% sure, but what I've gone ahead and done it's a little experiment. I've taken a few frags. Um, where did it go? This one here. I just fragged it. It's on a new colony that came in. And I put one frag here. I put one over there under our dual Hydra 32s. One under our Reef Casa light. One under our blades, our pair of blades. One over there. I put one over here. And I put three in the basement. I just took one frag and put it all over the store. 
and I want to see what does the color look like after two or three weeks. If you guys have any ideas why, I would love, love, love to hear it. I'm going to read the comments. Let me tell you maybe some of the differences other than flow and light. These are Gen 4 Radeons, not even the Pro, just regular Gen 4. This is a Gen 5. These are Gen 6. The Spectrum though, the way I've programmed them, it is quite similar from this here, the Gen 6, to over there, the Gen 4. The major difference is um, the power. These things hit full power and they run it a lot longer. Those things don't even reach maybe 75%. There's five of them there. There's three of them here. Makes me want to go back and watch this video. I think everyone should watch it because it was a really good one. We went to go visit. Let me show you. Route 66. Oh my God. I was younger and skinnier. Jeez. I remember when we went here, I was blown away with the color he was getting on his Acropora. And he's only running three Radeons over a eight foot bed. And I remember from this trip, the biggest takeaway from this 44 minute video, I think it's really worth watching. Very cool video. Sorry for the audio on it. He's really, well, I thought was under lighting his tanks where I would use five or six Radeons. Chris is using three, three for eight or 10 foot beds, really high up. And I remember him saying in the video, we really don't need to give Acro as much light as we're giving them. I was truly, truly, like, really, really impressed with the color he was getting with so little light. And I kind of forgot that video. You know, we do a lot of traveling here on the channel. And sometimes I got to go back and watch it. But this experience here with this Tortusa is making me remember that video. And what I've done as well is move all my pink Cadillacs. So these are my refraff pink Cadillacs. They are not nearly as nice as they should be. The color is meh. That's uh, M-E-H, the capital M, meh. Not so hot. This can be such a stunning, stunning coral. When it came in, it was looking really good. And um, it's over there under the G6s. So it makes me think maybe they don't need as much light as I, as I thought. Maybe the Gen 4s are superior to the Gen 6, but that's, that's, that, that's blasphemy. I don't even know if I'm allowed to say that. Um, personally, the Gen 5 is still my favorite light. When I put my Acro here, again, this is connected. Same water, same nutrients, nitrates, phosphates, pH, alkalinity, calcium, magnesium, strontium, potassium, iodine, whatever you want to look at, it's all the same. When I put Acros in here, they look, they color up really, really, really nice. So, I don't know, food for thought. I'm really curious to hear what you guys have to say and I appreciate you kind of listening to me rant and explain this little situationship I'm having with Acropora. It's always been a love, <laughs> hate, hate relationship. Um, these died during shipment, unfortunately. And that one just recently. That one, not sure why. Oh, maybe because it was new. So yeah, let me know what you think and we will, uh, we will report back with our findings on the Acropora color experiment that we're starting. I'm gonna leave you with this beautiful tenuous that really deserves a name, or maybe not. Maybe we should just call it Acropora tenuous because coral naming has really gotten a little bit crazy. But who am I to say? Actually, I'm a little bit torn. I'm gonna leave you with this one more comment. Um, I don't give it a name. I call it pink Acropora tenuous. I'm telling you this from experience as a store owner, and it may not sell. I give it a silly dilly willy name, like what happens often with Soanthids, and then it sells. So this is a no name, it's not gonna sell. People want the name, even though there's no names. The names are all made up. So the hobbyist side of me is like, F off with the names. Just enjoy the piece. It's just mother nature doing her finest work. She's an artist and the Zoanthids are her canvas. The business side of me is like, Give it a dumb name because then it's gonna sell for $40 a polyp. But uh, I'm a little bit torn between it. I try reverting back to Latin names as often as I can, especially when I get into the acro. I don't know why, it just makes me feel good knowing like, oh, that's a Latistella and that's a, a Bratanoides. I just feel like a, like a really educated fart. But um, yeah, food for thought. Thanks for watching this video. We'll see you guys back here on the next episode of Fragbox TV. Bye for now.